Selva, you can start now. Selva? Yeah, sir. Yeah, you can start. Good evening to one and all present here for IEEE webinar series 7, 2.2. I am Selva Madhavan, IEEE student vice chair of BTS from the Department of Electronic and Communication Engineering on behalf of St. Joseph's Institute of Technology. I am here to volunteer for today's session. Now I request Dr. C. Jana Kauselia, ma'am, professor and head staff and student of her to take over and address the session. Thank you, Selva Madhavan. Good day, Dr. Athena and all participants. This is Dr. C. Jana Kausalya, Professor and Head, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, St. Joseph's Institute of Technology, St. Joseph Group of Institution, India. I would like to extend warm welcome on behalf of St. Joseph's in Management and 7.2.0 Organizing Committee to Dr. Athena, Professor at Rutgers University, New Jersey, USA, to give a talk on coexistence between radar and communication system. Thank you, Professor, for accepting our invitation and for your gracious presence here. Our respect and gratitude to our beloved Chairman, Sir, Dr. B. Babu Manoharan, Managing Director, Madam, Mrs. Jesse Priya, and Director, Sir, Mr. Sashi Shekhar, and our Principal, Sir, Dr. P. Ravichandran, for their continuous support. Warm welcome to all the participants from various places, and we are deeply appreciative and grateful to you all participants. Thank you. And uh, now the session is over to Mr. Selva Madhavan, uh, student uh, vice chair, IEEE BTS Society, to introduce the speaker of the session. Thank Selva you, ma'am. Madhavan, you can take over the session. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. I will be sharing a few words about today's speaker. Dr. Athena Petruklo is a distinguished professor at Rajas University, New Jersey, USA. She received her PhD and MS degree in Electrical and Computer Engineering from Northeastern University. She was professor at Drexel University from 1992 to 2010. Her specialties are wireless networking, stat statistical signal processing, wireless sensor networking, radar and wireless security. It's our pleasure to have you here, ma'am. Before we start the session, I would like to tell a few instructions to be followed by the participants. Kindly post your question and queries in the chat box. Attendance link will be posted at the end of the webinar. Now I invite now I invite our speaker of the day to kindly start the session. Oh hi everybody. It's my pleasure to be here. Can you hear me well? Yeah, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma yes. Okay. Yes, ma um, I've never been to India and I always wanted to come. So I hope that uh, there will be some opportunity in the near future when all this uh, pandemic craze is over that I will get to visit India. So in addition to being a faculty at Rutgers, I'm also president-elect of the IEEE Signal Processing Society. And uh, what I'm gonna talk about today has a lot to do with signal processing. So I hope uh, it will uh, um, uh, make you interested in becoming members of the Signal Processing Society at some point. So the topic of the talk is uh, coexistence between radar and communication systems. And uh, this is what I'm going to talk about is work of my former and current students and has been supported by the US National Science Foundation and also uh, Raytheon Corporation. Uh, so there is, a, as we all know, there is a rapid growth of wireless devices and applications. And as a result, the frequency spectrum becomes congested. And we need more spectrum for that. Turns out that there is spectrum, but uh, it has been earmarked for uh, military or radar applications. Uh, and uh, now there are uh, proposals 
uh, all over the world to uh, release those frequencies for joint use by radar and communication systems. And this is what we mean by spectrum sharing. How can we share that spectrum without causing interference from one system to the other? So there are two kinds of approaches that are used. The first approach, uh, research approaches, that uh, are being investigated right now. The first one has to do with spectrum sharing where the radar and the communication system use different platforms. And the second one is uh, on dual function radar and communication systems where uh, there is one platform and the probing waveforms, the radar waveforms also convey communication information. So two different approaches. And I'm going to talk about both approaches, uh, focusing on the work that we have done. Um, uh, so before I start discussing the first approach, I will provide some background on uh, multiple input, multiple output radar, and how they work. And in particular on uh, MIMO radar that use spar sensing, because this is the type of radar that I will be using in the spectrum sharing scenario. Uh, let me start from the basics uh, for radar, uh, which is a phased array. A phased array is a configuration of antennas. Uh, all antennas are fed by a common waveform. And each antenna applies a different weight to the waveform. And the weights are such that the, uh, a beam is formed and uh, uh, all the transmitted signals by the antennas add up constructively at a particular uh, point in space. Um, and uh, by changing uh, those weights, we can uh, move the beam. This is called beam steering. This is how phase arrays work. You adjust the weights and you form a beam and uh, you uh, scan space looking for targets. If there's a target in the illuminated part of space, then uh, there will be returns that will be received by the array and the array will be able to tell where the target is, its speeds, it, it, it also it, it, its speed and its range. Now in the multiple input, multiple output radar, instead of a common waveform, we're feeding the uh, antennas with different waveforms. They're all different. And uh, uh, based on these different waveforms, we can formulate, uh, uh, we can illuminate multiple uh, parts of, uh, of a space. We can formulate a very wide beam as opposed to the narrow beam of the phased array. Um, this is good because we don't need to scan the space. We don't need to um, keep looking for targets by steering the beam because we illuminate a big part of the space. All the targets that are in there will uh, produce echoes that will be received by the array. This means that we can get faster uh, target detection. And as I'm, go I'm going to be talking about application of MIMO radar for autonomous vehicle applications, vehicle scenarios. For example, you want to use radar that will track all possible obstacles and targets as you're driving and uh, uh, so that you break if there is an obstacle in your way. So in that case, beam steering it represents waste of time. So you want to be able to track the targets as fast as possible. And my radar can do that because they illuminate uh, a wide part of space. So it's this uh, frequency diversity by the multiple uh, waveforms that allows us to formulate this uh, wide beam uh, and uh, have, uh, reduce the need for scanning. Now, if we transmit orthogonal waveforms, then we can synthesize the so-called 
virtual array. So what is the idea of virtual array? If you transmit orthogonal waveforms, uh, the, uh, the signals go up and then they are uh, reflected to the received way, uh, antennas. If you look at uh, one antenna, what you will get is a superposition of the orthogonal transmitted waveforms. Knowing these waveforms, uh, you can do much filtering and identify the contribution of each transmit antenna. So basically, each antenna, receive antenna, with a match filter can give you three views of the target. So if you have three such receive antennas, you have nine views of the target. This is equivalent to having a phased array with nine elements. So here you have three plus three, six physical elements, and you can formulate a virtual array with nine elements. In general, if you have M transmit antennas and N receive antennas, you can formulate a virtual ar uh, array of size N times M. Now the resolution depends on the number of elements and the spacing between the elements. So uh, if you have nine elements spaced apart by D, then the resolution is nine D. So uh, the more elements, the higher the resolution. So the virtual array in that sense achieves higher resolution while using a small number of elements. Uh, my moderator are receiving a lot of attention in uh, autonomous driving uh, applications. I mean, uh, a lot of uh, tier one uh, manufacturers and uh, startups are exploring MIMO radar for uses in autonomous driving. So uh, in that scenario, you need very high angular resolution in order to track objects, obstacles, or other vehicles so you can drive safely. And uh, in that sense, you need very high angular resolution. And MIMO radar can give you that angular resolution. It also requires small packets because you want to fit that radar uh, behind the bumper. If you were to use a phased array in order to get high angular resolution, you would need a, a large array. But with MIMO radar, you can do the same, you can achieve the same resolution with much fewer elements. So it gives you smaller packets that can fit behind the bumper. So this, these are the properties that have made MIMO radar very appealing to uh, autonomous uh, driving uh, applications. And we have a review article coming up uh, in the IEEE Signal Processing Magazine. I think it will appear uh, next month. Uh, where we uh, describe the ap applications of MIMO radar um, on autonomous driving. Now, um, uh, since I started talking about autonomous driving, uh, right now most of the cars have uh, uh, ADAS. ADAS is Advanced Driver Assistance Systems that have very limited uh, uh, angle resolution. They cannot resolve closely spaced targets. Uh, LiDAR, uh, on the other uh, hand, uh, that use light, uh, have very good uh, angular resolution. So LiDAR can produce point clouds, as you see here. These are point clouds. Basically, they get reflections from points on uh, uh, the targets because they have such good resolution. And then they can process these point clouds uh, via deep neural networks and uh, identify targets very well. But they have a, a drawback. They are susceptible to bad weather because they use light. So they are susceptible to fog and rain, and they're also very expensive. And here we have a MIMO radar that uh, can provide the low cost, the high angle resolution uh, alternative and works for all weather conditions. It's not affected by the weather. Uh, so using MIMO radar, you can do imaging radar, what's called imaging radar, produce these points of clouds, uh, which uh, along with machine learning techniques can identify targets very well. So um, this is a very uh, active research field these days that is attracting a lot of attention. Okay, now moving on, I will use MIMO radar 
for the coexistence, my moderator that use sparse sensing. And um, I will be talking about the matrix completion based my moderator. So what is matrix completion? Uh, we have a, a matrix, you can think of it as this puzzle, uh, where the blue pieces are missing. We observe the great uh, entries of the matrix, but the blue entries are missing. Turns out that we can fill in for the missing elements if the matrix is low rank. And the way we fill in for the missing elements is we solve a nuclear norm optimization problem where basically we're looking for a matrix that has all the gray elements and uh, for the blue elements, it's the matrix that uh, minimizes, has the smallest nuclear norm. Nuclear norm is the sum of the singular values of the matrix. So um, the matrix can be uh, recovered completely with high probability if it's low rank. Uh, it, it, it is uh, of large size. <clears throat> The observed entries are sampled uniformly at random. So these blue pieces cannot be uh, along a straight line. They have to be placed uh, random, uh, randomly, uniformly at random. And uh, also another important property, the matrix must have low coherence. And I will uh, hint what, what we mean by low coherence. So these are the conditions for the matrix to be recoverable with high probability. <clears throat> Now let's uh, go back to my moderator. Um, so you have a, a, the transmit antennas here, the receive antennas here. The way that we use uh, my moderator is we uh, put the received signals from the transmit antennas in a matrix. And uh, y r, YR is that matrix. And this matrix can be formulated like this, where this is the transmitted waveforms. And the rest, let's call it D, is the target response. It depends on the receive and transmit array configurations and also the targets. Um, so using this, um, typical array processing techniques can recover the targets. However, if we look at this matrix based on this structure, if uh, you have a, a large number of transmit and receive antennas and a small number of targets out there, this is a low rank matrix, which means that you don't actually need all these uh, elements in this matrix to do target estimation you can actually subsample this, matri this matrix. In other words, subsample in time the received signals by all antennas. And then you can, under certain conditions, you can recover the missing elements by doing matrix completion. So this is uh, part of the work that we have done. Uh, my moderator with matrix completion is you go to the receive antennas and you use a random sampling controller. So the antennas sample in time randomly, and then you take these samples and you formulate a, a, a matrix. And it turns out that the matrix that you will formulate is related to the MIMO radar matrix uh, as this is like a, a, you multiply point by point this matrix with another matrix that has ones corresponding to the positions that were sampled and zeros otherwise. So it's a Hadamard product of the sampling matrix and the MIMO radar matrix. Again, um, this is a low rank matrix and under certain conditions can be um, recovered in full and the conditions um, just to give you an idea, I'm not going to uh, cover this in detail. So the conditions um, depend on the coherence of the left and right singular spaces of the matrix, the matrix that we want to complete. And um, the coherence has to be bounded by 
two numbers that are small, the smallest possible value is one. And uh, if, if the bound is one, then it's the best case scenario. Uh, so it turns out that we have shown that uh, if every waveform snapshot has a flat spectrum, then the coherence parameters of the matrix uh, are small, uh, which means that we can do uh, a matrix completion. But how do we find these waveforms that have flat spatial spectrum? Uh, it turns out that uh, you can do it optimally, but it's very expensive. It's very uh, computationally intensive. We have to do optimization in the Stifel manifold. But uh, we have proposed, um, we have shown that uh, we can use random unitary waveforms and they perform uh, very close to optimal. And uh, that would uh, facilitate things. But when we go, um, so by using random unitary waveforms, we meet the conditions for completion. Now, the performance of matrix completion uh, depends on the signal to interference ratio. And if the SINR drops below 10 dB, then uh, it does not work well. So how can we get around that? We have to use precoding at the radar. The precoding basically will uh, formulate a beam that will avoid certain areas. For example, clutter. If you, clutter is returns from targets of no interest to us. Uh, targets because of buildings or uh, cars. So we can formulate a beam that avoids these targets. So the precoding will allow us to formulate that beam. So if we use MIMO radar that does uh, sparse sensing and also uses precoding, then the previous expression will have a P in front of S. P will be the precoding matrix. Um, and uh, it turns out that uh, this, this precoding matrix, the question now is, how is this precoding matrix will affect the matrix completion? Will the condition still hold? Well, we found that uh, if we use random uh, unitary uh, signals and uh, any kind of precoding matrix, then uh, we can still uh, maintain low coherence bounds for the left and right uh, singular spaces. So the bounds basically are independent of P, the precoding matrix, which is good because we can design the matrix any way we want and still matrix completion applies. And instead, uh, we can easily um, simulate a random unitary matrix from a random Gaussian matrix after applying grant smith orthogonalization. So uh, to summarize, we can have a MIMO radar where we, uh, before we transmit the waveforms, uh, 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 random um, unitary random waveforms, before we transmit them, we pre-code them and we'll see how we're gonna uh, determine that pre-coding matrix. Then at the receiver, we're going to subsample and then apply matrix completion. And then we are ready to apply any kind of uh, array processing method in order to do uh, target estimation. So let's, uh, now that uh, I have described to you the uh, MIMO radar using matrix completion, let's move to uh, spectrum sharing between a MIMO radar that uses matrix completion and a MIMO communication system. So um, it's just as a motivation uh, example, this is the power spectrum in uh, downtown Berkeley, frequencies between zero and six gigahertz. And um, you can see that below two, there's a lot of crowding by uh, users. A lot of users are using these frequencies. While between two and four, uh, there is uh, much less crowding. Turns out that uh, two to four gigahertz is the S band that is allocated to uh, airborne early warning radar. Uh, it's also used by some uh, weather radar. 
And it's also used by some uh, communication systems that operate at 3.5 gigahertz, like LTE systems. Um, so because of this low ut utilization of this band, there are ongoing efforts to release the spectrum um, for joint use between radar and uh, wireless communications. And when this happens, there will be interference. And uh, there are different proposals to how to handle interference. For example, you can enforce large spatial separation. If you want to operate in those frequencies, then uh, you cannot uh, be in certain geographical areas. And uh, NTIA, which is a US federal agency for communications, um, uh, uh, produced a report that shows the Siphorn uh, radar exclusive zones. So these yellow lines are zones that are uh, uh, exclusively assigned to radar at those frequencies around 3.5 gigahertz. But uh, these zones run through the most populated areas, metropolitan areas in the US. So actually this geographical separation will not be very efficient because uh, uh, wireless users who want to use these frequencies will not be able to, so they will not see the advantage. Uh, there are other uh, ways to reduce interference, like a dynamic spectrum access, where you um, sense the spectrum and if it's available, you transmit, you is the radar or the communication system. Uh, but this is not a very efficient approach because um, when you want to do this fast, then you don't want to wait for your turn to transmit whenever the spectrum becomes available. Um, then there are special multiplexing approaches when uh, the radar and the communication system have multiple antennas, then they, they can do special multiplexing, which means that they can formulate beams and try to avoid interfering with each other by manipulating these beams. And there are works uh, where the radar waveform uh, are projected to the null space of the channel to the communication system. So basically the radar, when it uses this kind of waveforms, they do not interfere with the communication system, which has a natural uh, a problem. If a, if a target is at the location of the communication system, the radar will miss it by trying not to interfere with the communication system. And there are also works that um, space, spatial filtering at the radar receiver have been done. But most of the works uh, that existed um, addressed interference either for the communication system or for the radar system. We did some work um, uh, around 2016 and 17 where we uh, proposed a cooperative spectrum sharing approach where you address the interference to both systems simultaneously. And we showed that by doing that, you uh, achieve much better results um, as uh, opposed to addressing interference for one system or for the other uh, separately. So I'm gonna uh, show you more details on how we did that. Um, and it turns out that the sparse sensing uh, MIMO based MIMO radar can benefit uh, spectrum sharing. So suppose that you have a, 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 a MIMO radar that is interested in targets and nearby there is a communication transmitter, for example, a, a smartphone that has multiple antennas trying to communicate with its tower, with the cell tower. So we're gonna uh, note by G2, the interference channel from the communication transmitter to the radar, and G1, the channel from the radar to the communication receiver. So if you look at the radar receiver, 
the radar, uh, the way the radar works is it transmits uh, pulses and then uh, stays silent, waiting for echoes, target echoes, and then it repeats the same cycle. Uh, so as the radar uh, receives the target echoes, it also receives the interference from the communication transmitter. So this uh, gray uh, area is, represents the interference from the communication transmitter. If you look at the communication receiver here, it receives the interference from the radar when it transmits and also the signal that it's of interest to it from the transmitter. We assume that um, it, it does not, uh, it's not affected by echoes of the, of the targets. Um, so how can we design the operation of the two systems, the, the radar and the communication system, in order to minimize these interference effects. So if we look mathematically at the radar that performs sparse sensing, we have a component that is the signal that the radar receiver is interested in. So these are the transmit waveforms. This is the precoding that the radar has done. And this is the target uh, information. But in addition to that component of interest, it also receives interference from the communication system. X are the communication uh, signals that the communication uh, transmitter transmits. Um, this is clutter. Um, so the clutter is, depends on the waveforms that the radar transmits because it's the reflections of these waveforms from uh, points of no, no, no interest. And there is noise. And if you look at the communication receiver, the communication receiver receives the signal that is waiting, is expecting from the transmitter, but also the interference from the radar and noise. Um, so if we can compute the interference at the communication receiver, it's going to be a function of the interference channels. And this phi matrix that depends on the, its phi p uh, Hermitian is the precoding at the, uh, that the radar does. Now, if we look at the uh, interference for uh, the radar, so you have the communication system that interferes with the radar. And the radar does subsampling. So the a channel, the effective channel between the communication transmitter and the radar receiver is not G2. It changes on a symbol by symbol basis uh, because of the subsampling, because the subsampling changes on a symbol by symbol basis. So we have, if L, we look at L symbols, we have L different channels. So the ideal thing for the communication system would be to try to adapt to those channels and do uh, a dynamic, uh, adaptive communication transmission. In other words, um, change its uh, uh, co uh, covariance matrix, the covariance matrix of its transmissions on a symbol by symbol basis to try to uh, adapt to that changing uh, channel. So the effective interference at the radar during L symbols is basically this, that involves the, uh, the uh, covariance matrices that the communication system use over the L symbols and the channels that change over the L symbols. And uh, we're interested in, um, so the variables that we can control is the radar precoder or this phi matrix that is PP Hermitian. The communication uh, system covariance matrices, we have uh, L, if we have L symbols. The subsampling scheme that the radar does. And we have some constraints that we need to meet. For example, we need to maintain some transmit power of the radar and the communication system. Uh, and we want to make sure that the communication system meets uh, some minimum rate requirement. So we can formulate a problem where basically we 
maximize the signal to interference radio uh, 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 ratio at the radar. And we're talking here about effective SNR because, because of the subsampling, we want to focus only on the entries that have been sampled. So we can formulate a, a problem here uh, where we maximize the expected SANR and the variables are the covariance matrices of the communication system, the precoding matrix of the radar and the subsampling scheme subject to these constraints, which are uh, communication rate and power. So um, this uh, problem can be solved and we can find the optimal signaling scheme for the radar and the communication system. It's a difficult problem to solve. It's a non-convex problem. It can be solved using um, alternating optimization, where we fix one of the variables, uh, two of the variables, and optimize with respect to the other, and uh, go on like this. So there are more details in the paper that I cited, if you are interested in this. So uh, who would solve this problem? Uh, there is a central node controller, which could be part of the radar, if the radar is the first uh, priority system, that would collect the interference channels, G1 and G2, and the communication channel between the communication transmitter and receiver. And it will formulate and solve this problem, and then it will pass uh, these variables to the two systems. So this system requires some sort of uh, coordination. Uh, maybe I will skip that. Uh, now, uh, what if we use the MIMO radar without subsampling? What is the adv advantage of MIMO radar that uses sparse sensing and uh, matrix completion. So uh, in, a, in a regular MIMO radar that samples at Nyquist rate, G2 is the interference channel between the communication system and the radar. Usually this channel is, uh, this, uh, this channel matrix is full rank. So it has an empty null space. So um, there are no directions over which the communication system could transmit in order to avoid interfering with the radar receiver. On the other hand, if we look at the uh, MIMO radar that does sparse sensing, the channel changes on a symbol by symbol basis. And it turns out that it has a non-empty null space. This means that uh, there is opportunity for the communication system to transmit in that null space uh, and uh, no, not interfere with the radar. In that sense, the MIMO uh, MC uh, radar uh, handles interference much better than the uh, regular MIMO radar that do, does uh, full uh, sampling. So, my MC radar results in reduced interference. Uh, let me show you some results. Um, let me see how we're doing with time. Okay. Um, so this is uh, the beam pattern uh, as function of azimuth angle at the radar transmit that the radar transmits. So we have the red line. Uh, oh, first of all, we have. Uh, Three targets indicated here by uh, the solid black lines. And we have some uh, scatterers indicated by the dotted lines. We have one, two, three, four scatterers. Um, and the radar transmits based on this, uh, the proposed uh, precoding scheme that I just described. And the beam pattern formulated is the red uh, line. So the beam pattern basically focuses on the targets that we want to track. Um, and the, the black line, the blue line is the null space precoder. A null space precoder would try to avoid causing interference to the communication system. So the radar transmits in the null space of the interference channel. And we have uh, 
uh, we have placed a target here. Uh, uh, yes, so the null space precoder is trying to avoid this target that is placed exactly at the location of the communication system. So we expect that since no uh, power will be radiated in that direction, this target will be missed. And there is also the uniform precoding scheme that the radar transmits everywhere without caring about anything. And this is what we uh, estimate based on this uh, beam pattern. So the, uh, the black line could correspond to the uniform precoding scheme completely misses the targets. Uh, in this scenario, we have very strong clutter so it basically detects the clutter. Uh, the blue line, which is the null space precoding, completely misses this target. Uh, which one? This, this target. So this target, as I said, was in the direction of the communication system. So by projecting in that direction, completely misses it. While the red line correctly tracks the targets. So here we assume that we knew the covariance matrix of the clutter, uh, because uh, the, the clutter, we assume that we can estimate the effect of clutter and then uh, design the precoding matrix so that we can uh, remove that effect. And this is a simulation showing the effective signal to interference rate uh, ratio at the radar as function of the radar transmit power. Um, this is the joint precoding scheme. It achieves a high effective SANR. Uh, here, down here are all schemes that involve uh, no cooperation or partial cooperation. For example, no cooperation. The radar does uniform precoding and the communication system transmits without caring about the radar. This is the effective SNR at the radar. This is uh, the... Uh, blue uh, line is the radar does precoding because it wants to spare the communication system from interference and the communication system transmits uh, in a selfish fashion. So this is uh, partial cooperation, still it very bad ex uh, expected SINR. Um, and this is uh, after we uh, uh, do matrix completion and estimate the targets, this is the uh, target estimation error. You can see that the joint recording results in much lower uh, target estimation error as compared to uh, other schemes that do partial cooperation. Um, and now if we look at the MIMO radar versus MIMO radar that uses part sensing and matrix completion, this is the SINR as function of the uh, subsampling ratio that we do. Um, so the black line is the MIMO radar and the red line is the MIMO MC radar, where we can see that when we do subsampling up to 60%, then the uh, MIMO MC radar results in significant uh, gain in expected SINR. As we further increase the subsampling, basically, um, when we sample 90% of the samples, the MIMO MC radar becomes equal to the MIMO radar. So the SNR uh, becomes the same. If we look correspondingly at the uh, target uh, recovery estimate, uh, error, estimation error as function of the subsampling rate, we can see that there is a range of subsampling between 40 to 60% that the MIMO MC radar does better than the regular MIMO radar. So it uses fewer samples, but it results in better uh, target estimation performance. And this is because basically we are doing better interference suppression. So as a bottom line, MIMO MC radar can coexist with the communication system and achieve a better target estimation than MIMO radar while saving up to 60% of samples. 
Now let's move to uh, dual function radar and communication systems. I'm going to use the same uh, image again. It's a very popular uh, scenario that involves autonomous driving. So imagine to have a device that can track targets and communicate information at the same time. For example, that would rev revolutionize auto uh, autonomous driving. Imagine this car to um, use its uh, sensing, uh, its sensors to uh, sense other cars, obstacles, whatever, and then be able to communicate this information to other vehicles. For example, the uh, vehicle here would communicate this information to the vehicle here. So this guy would be in much better position to sense the environment that would uh, result in safer driving. So it would be ideal to have a device that would be able to track and also communicate information. We have a, a, a review article coming up in ITP Transactions for Communications that summarizes the uh, works on dual function radar communication systems, DFRC systems. This is another case of coexistence, but both operations, sensing and communication, happen uh, with the same device. So how does this work? Uh, if you have multiple antennas, then you can form a main beam that you, you will devote to communications. And you can have, uh, you can embed information uh, in the side lobes, communication information, uh, sorry, the other way. You can devote the main beam for sensing to your radar operation, and you can embed communication beam, uh, communication information to the side lobes. For example, uh, you can convey information in a passive keen fashion, or you can convey information in permutation of waveforms across the arrays. These are works that have been done. There's also a class of work that communicate information by the activation patterns of the transmit antennas. So transmit antennas go on and off in a controlled fashion, and this pattern conveys information. It's like a, a code. So if the communication system can uh, detect which antennas were on, it will uh, get information. Um, but of course, this is not a high rate information. If we were to use this device in the uh, autonomous uh, driving scenario, we need to convey a lot of information uh, and you need the really high rates. So um, ideally you would like to uh, use uh, information in the transmit waveforms along with this uh, uh, antenna activation pattern information. And uh, we have uh, some work that I'm very excited about uh, that is going to appear in the IEEE radar conference that uses OFDM waveforms. So you have uh, antennas, a MIMO radar that transmits OFDM waveforms from its antennas. And because you have a lot of carriers and all antennas transmit on all carriers, you can at, uh, achieve very high communication rate. And uh, you can also uh, take advantage of a virtual array and uh, achieve very high uh, angle uh, resolution. So uh, what we're proposing here is a system that can achieve very high communication uh, rate and also very good uh, radar uh, resolution, target resolution. I'm not sure I have enough time to go over this. You told me 45 minutes. Should I stop here or can I continue? Well, you can continue, man. you can continue. Okay. So the, the system would work like this. You have a, a number of transmit antennas and a number of receive antennas. And its antenna will modulate uh, in an orthogonal frequency division multiplexing fashion blocks of data. 
And uh, if, if you don't know what OFDM is, then you take a block of data, you modulate them, let's say in QAM fashion, then you take an inverse DFT, then you attend the cyclic prefix, and then you serialize this, you produce a continuous wave waveform and you send it. And this is what we call the OFDM symbol. And you send multiple OFDM symbols. Uh, in this, in what we proposed, the antennas are turned on and off based on an activation code that is meant to communicate information. So this is uh, what the transmitted waveforms look like. They go, they bounce off a target. They convey information to the target, to the car, but they also tell the receive antennas where this target is. And this is all done based on the symbols at this point, the modulation symbols and the received demodulation symbols. This is, uh, the radar will uh, track the target based on these symbols. And uh, these symbols basically uh, depend on the antenna index, the receive antenna index, the carrier and the block, the index of the OFDM block. And of course, the target will receive the information based on the D, the, the symbols that are being transmitted. Um, I guess I will skip the details. Uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you how we use the virtual uh, array. Uh, so we, we have a number of subcarriers. We separate them into two groups, private subcarriers and shared subcarriers. And we assign the private subcarriers, we assign them exclusively to the active antennas. So the, blue, uh, the red antenna that is active is assigned a private subcarrier, similarly the brown antenna and the blue antenna. And the rest of the subcarriers are uh, transmitted in uh, in a, a shared fashion. So we have proposed a way to actually uh, formulate a, a, a virtual array based uh, on uh, the private subcarriers that achieves very high resolution. Um, and uh, I guess I don't want to take too much of the time. Uh, how the communication system uh, identifies the on antennas. Uh, if you look at the received symbols of over the ith carrier, um, you can formulate this matrix equation where H is the channel frequency response along the ith carrier. And AI contains all the symbols that were transmitted on a particular carrier. So if you have a lot of antennas, but only as small antennas are activated, this vector will be sparse. So using sparse signal recovery schemes, the communication receiver can identify the support of this vector, which is basically the uh, active antennas. So we'll get the information that is conveyed by the activation pattern. And, that, and then it will estimate the symbols uh, on the shared subcarriers by focusing on the active antennas only. So uh, if we have NT uh, transmit antennas and we activate only an X, we have NT, um, sorry, NT choose NX active uh, antenna patterns. This is wrong, NT choose NX active uh, antenna patterns. Um, so this, we can, uh, this is the information that we can transmit. Log base 2C is the uh, information, the bits that we can trans uh, transmit based on uh, these active antenna patterns. And then this is uh, the symbol that we can, can transmit. If we have an X active antennas with one private carrier on its active antenna and an S minus an X shared carriers, we can transmit this many symbols. We can also reorder the private subcarriers and increase 
uh, the number of the, the amount of information that we can uh, transmit. For example, the position bits can be increased uh, by uh, uh, to log base two c times n x factorial. N x the number of uh, transmit ante active antennas. So, in addition to conveying information, the sparse transmit array reduces complexity of the uh, transmit array because only a small number of antennas are active, so we need only a small number of RF chains, which means a less costly uh, transmitter. Um, so um, some results, I guess I will, I will skip that. Uh, so to conclude, we have reviewed uh, MIMO radar with sparse sensing and matrix completion. Um, we have reviewed co-design of MIMO radar with matrix completion and MIMO communication systems and so that the co-design approach can reduce interference and result in better target recovery. Uh, and this is because the random sampling modulates the interference channel and this modulation facilitates the co-design. We have uh, proposed a novel dual functional radar communication system uh, that uses OFDM waveforms. It achieves high range resolution uh, uh, because it uses uh, all the available uh, carriers. So it, uh, the range resolution depends on the bandwidth. So the system transmits high bandwidth, so it achieves high range resolution. Uh, it achieves high angle resolution using the private subcarriers idea. And um, it's also low cost because it uses a small uh, a transmit uh, sparse array. Well, this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. And I will be happy to answer any questions. Sorry, I went over time. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am, for the informative and fruitful session. Ma'am, shall we start the question and answer session? Please. Moving on the first question. How to calculate the proper sampling rate of a de radar signal? So the sampling rate, I mean, the Nyquist rate, we know it depends on the bandwidth of the signal. Um, if you want to subsample, I guess is the question. So you want to subsample uh, uniformly at random. This is uh, one class of techniques. Another class of techniques is you want to subsample so that the subsampling matrix has large spectral gap. So the spectral gap is the difference between the highest and second highest eigenvalues, singular values of the matrix. So the sampling matrix basically has ones and zeros. One correspond to the sampling instances. You want this matrix to have high spectral gap. Okay, ma'am, thank you. I'm moving on the second question. How to estimate accuracy of RCS measurement? The, uh, okay, so we have a vector that contains the targets and its target is represented by its reflectivity. So the results that I showed have uh, uh, referred to the accuracy estimate of those numbers that basically represent the RCS uh, of the target. Okay, ma'am, thank you. Moving on to the third question. Why directional antennas are used for beam forming technique? Sorry, I, I you broke up. I didn't hear you. Why directional antennas are used for beam forming technique? Where or why? Why, ma'am? Why directional antennas are used for beam forming technique? Yes. So directional antennas transmit energy in. A, a certain uh, direction, right? We can uh, do that by also manipulating the weights. So I guess if you know that you want to exclude certain areas, let's say you want to focus in the sky, you would use directional antennas to uh, forget about the clutter that would be produced by uh, buildings nearby or uh, other obstacles, right? So you focus on a certain uh, 
uh, space that you are interested in. So you can thank use you, and then as in addition to whatever I presented. Well, thank you, ma'am. Moving on to the fourth question. Does altitude affect the performance of the radar? Yes, altitude affects the performance in the sense that it changes the environment, right? If you are in the city, there's a lot of clutter. The surrounding objects will, if you get higher, then it's less clutter, right? Okay, I'm moving on to the fifth question. Among the MIMO, MIMO simulation technique, which is the best technique? What is the question again? Among the MIMO stimulation technique, which is the best technique? So I compared here MIMO with MIMO that does sparse sensing. And I saw that in the co-design method, when you use MIMO along with sparse sensing, you better control interference. And as a result, you achieve better target estimation, target RCS estimation. Okay, ma'am. Thank you for answering questions, ma'am. Now I invite Dr. G. Rohini, ma'am, professor and head lab of us, to express her gratitude. Okay. Thank you, Selva Madhavan. Uh, good morning, Dr. Athina, ma'am. Good morning. Very, very good, good evening to all. Myself, Dr. Ruini, Professor, it gives me immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this webinar on behalf of the Department of ECE, St. Joseph Institute of Technology, St. Joseph Group of Institutions. Without communication, there is no world. Similarly, without antenna, there is no communication. First, I would like to thank our guest speaker, Dr. Athena, Professor at Rajas University, New Jersey, USA, for her stimulating speech on coexistence between radar and the communication systems. Thank you, ma'am, for finding time and giving information on sensing, spectrum sharing of MIMO radar system and dual function radar system in a very simple and understandable way, despite your busy schedule for the Savan 2.0 webinar series. My heartfelt thanks to our beloved chairman, sir, Dr. B. Babu Manavaran, for his consistent upkeeping conduction of this webinar. My sincere thanks to our managing director, ma'am, Mrs. B. Jeshupriya, and our director, sir, Mr. B. Sashi Shekhar, for their guidance in conduction of this webinar. I would like to express my gratitude to our principal, sir, Dr. P. Ravichandran, for his support to conduct this webinar. I also thank our head of the department and IEEE chapter advisor, Dr. C. Nyana Kausalya, and all other faculties of our department for organizing this event successfully. A special mention of thanks to our students' chair, IEEE BTS chair, Mr. Nikhil Madhavan and student vice chair, Mr. Selva Madhavan, third year ECE, and all other IEEE students for aiding in conduction of this webinar. Finally, I thank all the student, faculties, research scholars from India and other countries for their active participation in this webinar. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, ma'am. I would personally like to thank Dr. Athena, ma'am, for taking time from her busy schedule and joining us to share her knowledge. Thanks to our department heads and each one of our IEEE staff and student coordinators for taking an initiative and bringing this platform for the fellow student. Lot but not least, I thank participants for their active participation. Our next webinar is by an eminent speaker, Dr. Guy Butcher, who will be giving an interesting talk on satellite-based broadcast technology. Tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Interested participants can register in the same link and attend the session. Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Athena. Thank you for Thank spending you. your valuable time with us. For the, and, uh, we had a very informative session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.